On the other side is introverted intuition or perspectives. This is the uh, perceiving function for NJs. It'll be particularly strong in INJ types, and it will also be a strength for ENJs. So introverted intuition or perspectives, that's what it does. It understands the pattern, right? It understands the meaning and the narrative and the implication, and it sees way down the line. So taking and accounting is the thing that it's strong at. It understands, like if it has gone through something, it's usually pretty good at understanding its meaning for the self. And the, the thing it's really good at is reframing. When it's gone through a situation, it will oftentimes take a good lesson from it because it will see it from all the different frames. It'll understand it from a lot of different perspectives. And so if the situation itself was not particularly fruitful, you know, it wasn't like this major, I overcame this major obstacle and it was, you know, a, a, it was this, um, I don't know, a hero's journey, even if it was just a small one. Introverted intuition or perspectives can usually mine the gold out of it and go, well, if I look at it from this, from this angle, I actually really took a, an important life lesson from that. So taking and accounting is what it's strong at. So unsurprisingly, the other side is what it's weak at, which is extroverted sensing or sensation. And that is feeling ready to take action, knowing when the timing is right, and spotting and jumping into opportunities. So it tends to throttle itself. It'll mine all the gold out of the situation, but it will throttle itself from having the situation in the first place. And so its lack of confidence is oftentimes something that shows up in just not wanting to, not feeling ready to, to, to do, to, to jump into the situation. INJs are particularly going to resonate with that. ENJs will also to some extent, now as much as the INJs, but ENJs will also watch themselves throttle when they feel unsafe in a situation, when they don't feel like they can match the demand, the physical demands of the context that they're in. Well, I think EJs, ENJs are going to probably struggle not necessarily with taking action, but taking actions outside of things they've constructed kind of a control for. Like... They're going to want to pare things down to actions they know will work or create the relationships they want. I think that's really what an EJ is going to do. So they're going to get into action, but they're going to have a tendency to fall back on templates more likely, like things they know work in the outside world is, I think, how it's probably going to show up. So so then could we then say, I think what we're saying is if you're a judger in the Myers-Briggs system, you probably need to take more action or take more actions that you don't normally take. One of those two things. If you're a perceiver in the Myers-Briggs system, you probably need to take an accounting of what happened and the meaning of what happened more. So both are important, but if you can already probably see in your own life, you lean one way, way or the other, and it probably has to do with whether you're a judge or perceiver, which one you need to round out more in your life to build that self-confidence. Yeah, not just taking actions, but specifically ones that have obstacles. Of course. Challenge, yes. Yeah, challenge. Yeah. Exactly. Well, and that's what I think like with the EJs I was talking about, like I, I could just see an ENTJ, for example, saying, I'm not going to pick something that I don't, I can't win at. Right. I'm going to always <laughs> take an action that I know I'm going to put in the category of winning. And so my action set is more limited because to take an action with a challenge or obstacle means it's a little more uncertain. So I think there's still action focus. It's just what kind of actions. Mm -hmm. 